Pole is the first ever climate expedition to the South Pole from Singapore. Now, we think we have them on. Uh, ben, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you fine, Glenn. Can you hear me? Awesome. Yes, thank you so much. We weren't sure we do. You guys have had storms and connection issues and all that sort of stuff. So Ben is joining us, and correct me if I'm wrong, you are in Punta Arenas right now? No, we're not. Uh, oh, we got sorry. delayed, so <laughs> okay. we're still in Antarctica. Oh, you are? Even wow. better. Well, selfishly, from our perspective, that's much more exciting. <laughs> um, so why are you delayed? Is it a weather thing? Is it a what's going on? Yeah. Well, we had um, snowfall in Antarctica, which is strange as it may seem, unusual for the summer season. It's okay. normally a very, very, it's the driest continent on the planet. Right. But we had quite a lot of snowfall. And this will make you laugh. Uh, the airport in Antarctica is closed because of ice on the runway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're laughing. Isn't that, that, yeah, isn't, we yeah, isn't that amazing? <laughs> isn't that amazing? Oh, my so, gosh. Um, because they have no facilities at this airport. It's run by the Chilean um, Air Force. There's no facilities to clear ice off the runway. So... Mm. <laughs> Crazy. We're stuck on our boat offshore of the airport waiting to fly to South America. But you couldn't be in a more beautiful part of the world. Um, uh, well, we're going to get into that in just a minute. And let me just tell our audience real quick. You're, you're just finishing up a 10-day expedition um, where you're conducting a range of research activities, looking at different objectives, ice core drilling, understanding past temperatures, current rate of melt, sampling the deep water to analyze carbon and pollutants, etc. So you are doing a real um, uh, a, uh, exploration uh, to try to add to our knowledge about the climate and its changing ways. Um, anything else you want to add to that before we uh, talk a little bit more specifically about what you guys have been up to? Well, I think um, the, the, the voyage, as you, as you mentioned in the introduction, it's the first science-based mission of anyone coming out of Singapore to start to get involved with the international community that are really mm. trying to understand this fragile ecosystem. So we're doing some science on the atmosphere, on the oceans, and on the ice sheets. But then just as important to say, to, the other thing to say to you is that we're using, um, for the first time, well, Okay, I'll take that back. This is the second ever live broadcast from Antarctica. <laughs> yes. We did the first ever broadcast to Channel News Asia this week. Uh, you're not the first, but I think you'll take the second. We'll take the um, second. We're the first. But obviously, you. we're trying to use. Which, there you go. There you go, guys. But the, and the first the thing about it is that obviously we're. Yeah, we're using um, a satellite system from Starlink, from Elon Musk's Starlink, and it's very mm -hmm. novel and new. And we're on a boat um, in the Southern Ocean, just by the um, Antarctic Peninsula in King George's Island. So it's not a surprise that we keep dropping in and out of satellite content. Yeah. So, Professor Horton, just to clarify, because you dropped out, you're looking primarily at atmosphere, ocean, and the changes to the ice sheets what changes are you seeing what should we be concerned about and of antarctica the thing that blows your mind is the scale of this place i mean antarctica you know you can come up with some facts about it but it's twice the size of australia the ice sheet at its maximum is four kilometers thick and it has mm. enough ice within it to raise global sea levels by over 65 meters it is just quite simply colossal and when you're here you just feel so small in in awe of this continent and so i think one of the things that we're really trying to do apart from the science and we're doing some quite novel science here um, but it's also just like to, to communicate how important it is to everywhere in the world to protect this environment because the consequences of a collapsing us. Professor Horting is joining us live on a satellite phone from Antarctica, so he may cut out occasionally. And those are yeah, good. I'll tell you what, Ben, we won't interrupt you anymore. Just tell us what you're doing, what you found, and we won't interrupt any more in case you get cut off. <laughs> Maybe the satellites don't like the sound of your two voices. So that could could be. Well, well be. You said Elon Musk was behind mm. your connection, right? So, yeah. hmm. Anyway, go ahead. Mm. 
Um, so, you know, we've come out here, we've got a team of uh, eight people with us. Um, that involves, you know, uh, a young Singaporean scientist who you mentioned, uh, Fang Yi Tan. Um, but you will not be speaking to her because she's actually performing a science-based experiment right now. Oh. And that's more important <laughs> than talking to us. We get it. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest about that. Okay, let's let, 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 I just... Something wrong with a bit of honesty now and again. Um, and then we have uh, a young American scientist, assistant professor Jennifer Walker. Uh, she's uh, an assistant professor at Rutgers University. Then we have a social media team, um, because as I said, the other hugely important aspect of this is to try and communicate to Singaporeans and other people around the world how important it is to protect this environment. So we're conducting some science and we're doing some social media and, you know, this ice sheet is really important to people back in Singapore because, as we all know, we live on a coastal island. A third of Singapore's island is approximately one metre above the highest tides. And as I said previously, Singapore has enough, um, Antarctica has enough water within it to raise global sea levels by over 65 metres. So you only need to melt He always cuts off. Oh, right, right, oh, right, yeah, right at that moment, you're like, I'm back. I'm back. Oh, there yes. you go. Good. It only, yeah, it only melts. Sorry, say again. So why we're at the uh, West Antarctic, well, why we're at the Antarctic Peninsula is because this is the part of Antarctica that is warming the fastest. Indeed, the West Antarctic Peninsula is warming five times the global average. Okay, so, so some of the things that we're looking at is we're looking at um, or trying to better understand uh, what's called the doomsday glow. <laughs> he literally cut off on the word doomsday. Is that like the doomsday machine from Dr. Strangelove? It could well be. <laughs> it could well be. It's upon what I've watched and read about Professor Horton and others. It's this global, it's one of the few times at the moment, you could argue, yeah. in geopolitics where there is a, a global collaborative effort to do something mm. about the doomsday that we're facing. Mm. Mm. Um, he's gone at the moment, so hopefully he'll come back a little later. Uh, but if you are just joining us, we were talking to Professor Ben Horton, the director at the Earth Observatory of Singapore, live via satellite phone from a ship in the Antarctic, where he's been conducting research science on the melting ice caps melting ice sheets and those the repercussions very serious repercussions for a low-lying island like singapore yeah <clears throat> a, he's a, gone a, he's gone he's gone completely he's gone okay uh we may just have to move on because um uh unfortunately it looks like that his uh, connection is not very stable uh, we may try to bring him back on a little bit later if um if he uh if he does come back but that was professor ben horton he is with and I think he's back. Okay, Ben, you're back. Um, and, and we're we're going to give you one more shot to to give us some good information, Ben. Uh, there's I know there's lots to talk about, and we will certainly have you in the studio when you come back to Singapore. Um, one quick question to follow up, and that is the data and information that you're collecting. How will it augment what's already being done or has been done by other scientists uh, studying in Antarctica? Well, guys, I mean, I think um, that the new aspect that we're trying to understand here is where is the moisture coming from for Antarctica? Because when you, Antarctica is a very complex problem. If there is a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, if it lands on the eastern Antarctic ice sheet, which is at a much higher elevation, it creates snowfall. And that actually creates mass on the ice sheet, which would reduce the influence of sea level rise. However, if the moisture lands on the West Antarctic ice sheet in the summer months, it comes down as rainfall because it's so warm here now, and amplifying the melting of the West Antarctic ice sheet, creating catastrophic carving of ice here and causing rapid rises in sea level. So that's what we're trying to do that's what hasn't really been studied. So we've got these pieces of equipment that uh, basically sample the air in and around us for looking at microbes. And we're trying to analyze the DNA of microbes because they should provide a fingerprint of where the atmospheric moisture is coming from. Uh, 
hmm. and where it's going to. And then you can try and calibrate models that project the future. Are you going to have enhanced precipitation on the eastern Antarctic ice sheet, creating snowfall, creating mass, decreasing the impact of sea level rise? Or are you going to get it as precipitation in the summer months on West Antarctic ice sheet, which would cause catastrophic sea level rise? 